Hey everybody, God bless you all and welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. Man, I for one am so excited to be here because I know the Holy Ghost shows up every single time we're here. He's here right now. We were worshiping in the front room and he, it, it was, we had to really fight through it, but after 20 minutes, boom, he came in and just filled the room with his goodness. It was amazing. We're really, we had to keep fighting though, like we're going to fight tonight. We're going to get free tonight. He's going to help us. He's here with us. He is Jehovah Shama, and He's for us, and He wants us free and healed. And He's going to do it tonight. Um, so, oh, sorry, I'm Pete, and um, welcome all you Zoomers, or not Zoomers, sorry, different night, <laughs> YouTubers. Thank you for being in the house. I got a couple announcements real quick. Oh, there's another one over here. Cool. Um, we got the the... The Zoom Steps of Deliverance meeting is on Wednesday night. Um, man, things rock and Holy Ghost is moving there. People getting healed, delivered. Just come check it out. It's at 6 o'clock. I encourage you to check that out and get your midweek deliverance. You guys can join in. It's right here. Take a picture of it. Get on there. Get healed. Get delivered. Learn some stuff and move in power. Man, we are in some serious times now. We need to be moving in power. We need to be standing on the Word of God. We need to be learning the Word of God. We need to be spending time with the Father so we have peace and power to help people get through this perilous time that we're going into. Right there, 6 o'clock on Wednesday, right here. Seek God. Get in there. Um, oh yeah, let me on the 20th of this month, um, Julie's uh, class is right here, Saturday at noon. Come check that out for women only. Bring your friends, women. Here's the thing. Take a picture of it. Come check this out. Holy Ghost is going to be moving in power. There's going to be healings. There's going to be deliverances. It's going to be encouraging. So come check that out. You guys don't want to miss it. It's right there. That guy's smart taking pictures. Yep, tell your friends. Get them here. I believe there's flyers out on the table too. You can take some of those and pass them out. It's going to be a powerhouse. Praise God for that seminar. Um, let me see. We got the boxes on the doors. Um, Lori's in the gift shop. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. I'm going to, I left the house. I didn't bring any scriptures. I'm going to do Psalms 91, see if I can pull it off by memory. We're going to pray it though, okay? Because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of chaos. I think we need God's protection. Psalms 91 gives us that protection. It's all in there. But you've got to go to the secret place of the Most High. That's your prayer closet. That's walking in the Word. That's getting in with Him. So we're going to pray that, okay? Um, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust. Surely you will save us from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. You will cover us with your feathers and under your wings we shall take refuge. His faithfulness will be our shield and our buckler. We will not fear the terror of night. We will not fear the arrow that flies by day nor the perilous pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes will we look and see the destruction of the wicked if we make the Most High our dwelling. Even the Lord who is our refuge, then no harm shall befall us, no disaster shall come near our tent, for you will command your angels concerning us to guard us in all our ways. They will lift us up, lest we strike our foot against a stone. Help me, honey. Oh, you'll tread on the serpent, the lions and the cobra. Yea, the great lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will call upon him and he will answer me. I'll be with him in trouble, says the Lord. And I'll deliver him. I'll honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Father, I pray this over every YouTuber, 
whether it's tonight, next week, next year, or whenever, and everyone here, we thank you for your protection that no harm shall befall us. We thank you for it, and we stand on it. And thank you for delivering us tonight and healing us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> testing, 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 testing. Ooh, things are moving up and things are moving good. Moving up for Pete, too. I had a word. I said, hey, I was praying about you, and God said it's time. He's going to move you up in the spirit realm. No offense to, to the way Pete used to do it, but sometimes I'd catch him on the altar. He, he just scrunching, come out, and crying with people. I said, no, it's time. We all were like that. Me and Kelly Mike, and Mike, we used to yell like crazy people. Come out of that body. This place would erupt. People were like, whoa, what is this? Well, we don't do that anymore. God raised us up. And I had the word. Pete said, you know what? I believe that. He was telling me the same thing on the same day. Then I get an email today from Stephanie, and a lady says, hey, I didn't catch Rick's teaching or anything. I came in right when Pete started. And then Pete was casting out spirits in the brain. All these spirits came out of my brain, and my mind is super clear. You talk about confirming the word three times in one day. I'm, I'm going through this deal. There's some shifting in some different ministries we used to partner with. And I'm kind of thinking, hey, this one guy, I think he's got to go too. I was going to Scottsdale where I ride every week up at Fray's Field Park. Something says, turn around. I'm way on Bell Road. I come all the way back to Papago Park. I look to my left, and who is it? The exact guy I was thinking about. And instead of that going south, it was a bond and a building. Come on now. That's, that's your feet being ordained of the Lord. He's moving because why? The enemy's moving. The enemy's moving. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard against him. Just because you're born again doesn't mean you're the standard against him. It's those who are walking in obedience that can hear God, that, can, that actually have eyes to want to see what God's doing and want to see where to go and how to serve. Those are the ones that will be raised up again against the enemy, not the lukewarm, not the casual, not the doubting, not the fearful, not the drug addicted, not the porn addicted, not the grumbler and the complainer, not those who take offense with others. They're not going to be a part of that standard. They've excluded themselves. How do I know that? Because a guy came in for a one-on-one, -on -one and he was a good minister. He said things were going so good, he had three ministries at one time. He was an a, a associate preacher filling in uh, for the head guy at a, at a respected church that everyone would know. He had his own prison ministry. He'd go down to Florence. He had a homeless ministry or drug addicted ministry where not only did you get him off drugs, but he got him jobs as he's a foreman for this company. And he would get him jobs. Then he would get him plugged into the church. Oh, that's real. That's real uh, working with the drug addicted. When you can get him off a, drugs, a job, and then plugged into the church. Oh, that was a good one. And we sit down and the guy, the, something went wrong with him and the pastor. He leaves the church. Then the jails went away because it was associated with the, with the church. All of a sudden, pretty soon, his ministry to drug addicts, it, it went away. Next thing you know, he's got nothing. And now he's suffering. And now he's hurting. So I'm going through the protocol. I've never been in witchcraft, never been in sorcery, always was a hard worker, forgave his uncle miraculously, an uncle that used to curse him out when he was a little kid. His dad used to leave for three years at a time for work. Then he would come back, leave off another little sibling, and then he'd go back, leave for three years. And so he didn't know if his dad loved him. And his uncle would come over and curse him. So he had this rejection, and now he was suffering with diabetes. Diabetes is an autoimmune disease where the body begins to listen to all that negativity, and it begins to turn against itself. And he says, I, I, I messed up. I used to get so much revelation from the word of God. I, I was doing well. Everyone said I was impacting them. I was helping them grow as men of, and women of God. I have nothing now. I feel like a failure. And we got it. I said, yeah, have you forgiven yourself? 
He said, how can I forgive myself when I blew such a good ministry, such a good opportunity? How can I forgive myself? My two daughters under my very own roof are now addicted to drugs. At least one of them was. I think it was two. How can I? I'm a hypocrite. I can't even help my own family. I said, oh, that's a lie. That's where we got him. You got turned over to the tormentors because you wouldn't forgive. He, he believes me. There were some prophetic words where I knew exactly what he was doing. I saw, I'll tell you exactly how you live your life. And it was to the T how he lived his life. And I said, I know this because you're not the only one ever to come in here where the devil's pulled this trick and where he blinded your mind. I've seen it numerous times. He believed me. He repented. He went through a wonderful deliverance. And he left. He said his daughter got delivered. Danny was helping his daughter. Julie was helping his wife. The whole family gets a wonderful deliverance at the same time. He said, I'm leaving so happy. I'm leaving so light. It feels like a million pounds lifted off my body. Amen. Glory to God. The devil is a masterful deceiver. He deceives the whole world. Oh, he knows what he's doing. I'm going to go over an overview, and then I'm going to teach you some things you probably don't know about the spirit world, so bear with me some of these things I've been talking about for a while. But these, these devils are not playing around. They want to, he wants to build a case against you. Most people don't know that. I, I was around in the 90s when everyone started selling drugs. If you were African American in Omaha, Nebraska, you were claiming some set, and you had all kinds of hand signals to go with it. And they were making some money. A couple guys I know became, they were buying strip malls. The guy had never bought a car with the money he earned as a kid. Now he's buying strip malls a few years later. And, and well, what would happen when you're at that level, they build this case against you. So they don't just try to catch you in one act. They don't just try to catch you when a shipment comes in. They want to know how the shipment's coming in. They want to watch all the shipments. They want to watch where it goes. They want to learn the whole system so they can take the whole shipment, the distribution. They want to take it all down. So when they actually come and file the case against you, there's 50 charges, 100 charges. If you killed anybody, threatened to kill anybody, there's people with wires. They come and testify so they can get their get out of jail card, and they're trying to lock those people up forever. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. And it says in Revelations, he accuses you night and day before the Father. Well, you can't go up and waste God's time and lie about somebody. He's going to come exactly with what you've been doing. I got someone, he's a grumbler and he's a complainer. And now I got him full of lust and I got him watching porn. He's committed adultery 15 times. In his mind, 52,000 times. I got the right to take his family. I got the right to inflict drug addiction upon his children. He's allowing me in. He is the spiritual priest. He's allowed me to come in. He listens to me. The, the, the word of God, he's going to accuse you before the father with the word of God. And he says, hey, the Bible says you are a slave to the one that you yield yourself unto, whether to righteousness or whether to sin. It says clearly you can't serve two masters. You'll love one and hate the other or you'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. He'll begin to accuse you and say, you know what? He's despising you now. He's actually loving me. Look at how happy he is when he watches porn. Look at how happy he is chasing women. Look, he's beginning to despise you and he's beginning to hate you. And he gets legal rights. Oh, when the devil comes in, he begins to, to move in such power you can't believe it. But he doesn't do it until he has to. Well, that's what most people don't understand. He doesn't do it until he has to. What he would like you to do is just retract yourself from the Holy Spirit. Man, I can't keep going through this deliverance. You know how many people say, I can't go through this. My job has fired me. I lost these jobs. I got people coming against me that love me even when I was a drunk and messing up. Now they can't stand me and I'm treating them good and I'm trying to do right. I've shown up on time. I, I, I can't get along with my wife. She won't stop arguing. I can't get along with my husband. He's going crazy. I got to just get away from this deliverance. Or someone will find it in ministry. Hey, every time I preach, the whole world gets stirred up. So many times I told, people have told me, I quit praying in tongues because every time I pray in tongues, it seems like everything goes bad. So I quit praying in tongues. And what happens is you shrink back. The Bible says, if one shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. 
Why doesn't he have any pleasure in someone that shrinks back? Because the only thing that pleases God is faith. Faith is the evidence. Everything in scripture that you can have is yes and amen. Everything that God did for one person, he'll do for everybody because he's not a respecter of persons. That's the evidence that's in the word of God. So faith is the evidence of the things seen. You've seen it happen to all those New Testament saints. You've seen it happen to all those believers. You've seen it happen to the Syrophoenician woman. You saw it happen to the woman at the well. You saw it happen to the leper. You saw it happen to the blind men. And it says, we're not ones that shrink back. He says, but if you're operating by faith, it's the evidence of things hoped for, yet you might not have seen them. You haven't seen them yet, but you know they're real. That's faith. Faith is an action. Faith without any works is dead. That's what the Bible says. It's dead. You die. If you shrink back, you're spiritually dead. You're spiritually ineffective. That's what he does to most people. And that's what the mega church is designed for. It catches them all because now you're suffering. Whenever you're not fulfilling your call, you're not as close to God as you know you should be. You don't feel him like you used to when you used to walk in faith and help people out. You feel something. You feel a sense of, man, I'm in the right place doing the right thing. There's a sense that God is happy with me. But you're not sensing it when you're one that shrinks back. And now you're in this turmoil. And so now they have a program for you, the, the best singers. They'll have some smoke. They'll play five or six songs for you. And by the third song, you kind of start getting into it. And hey, whenever the word of God is preached, something good can happen. It's living and active. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. I've seen the most amazing things where people got saved. I believe people can get safe with Peter Popoff. Peter Popoff never believed in Jesus one day. He believed in hustling people with miracle oil and water and, and raking in the cash. He didn't even read the prayer request. He threw them in the dumpster and took the checks out. But I believe he could get people saved. Why? Because he was preaching God's word. But that's why it says, be careful. Not many of you assume to be teachers because I'm going to drudge you more strictly. Why? Because you're preaching. Someone's going to look at you and they're going to want to emulate you. Why? The Bible says that. Paul said, emulate me as I follow Christ. You follow me as I follow Christ. Man, that's a bold statement, but it's a biblical statement. And so that's what a mentor is. I went around and followed Mike Smith. Oh, how do you do it? Ah, come out of that body. I was just like that. Hey, come out of that body. <laughs> I was like a mini Mike. And uh, I was learning from him. He was doing it. It was effective. He helped me. I'll roll with the system, right? So... That's biblical to follow somebody that's doing the right thing. But now when you're doing the wrong thing, uh-oh, and they had an encounter with God through your ministry, they're going to follow you doing the wrong thing. And so that most of the mega church systems is the wrong thing because it's only a part of the gospel. You can't tell somebody only a part of the gospel. I heard a part of the gospel, and I said, you know what? That's good stuff, and I need Jesus, and I want to get saved. But I don't want to make that commitment right now because I'm enjoying sin. And I don't want that type of commitment. I, I'm a prone failure, and I'd probably be prone to failing God. So I better get some maturity and some years and get kind of tired of this sin. Then I'll live for God. It wasn't until Brother Steve called me out and said, hey, if you ain't born again and you die, your sins will be imputed upon you, and you will be thrown into hell. Whoa, they never told me that. I had been to church a hundred times at that point. I never heard I was going to go to hell without Jesus. Why? Because they didn't want to offend anybody. Because they didn't want anybody to leave. They might have a right intention saying, hey, we'll get you down the road. We'll get you in small groups. We'll get you in the Bible. We'll get praying for you. You'll end up getting saved. You're in God's hands. He's sovereign. They believe something. I don't believe it was malicious that we're just going to take this back and the people are going to suffer for it. I don't think that was their intention one bit. I thought, I think their intentions were good, but good intentions don't get it done Good intentions don't give you a pass in the spirit world. Paul said you got to go in the world and teach the whole counsel of God. And that's the mandate. You have to teach the whole counsel of God. That's what it says. Why it says, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Well, baptism is the first step of obedience. That, that's symbolic of not just the baptism of you dying and the old man staying in the, in the river and the new man coming out or the bathtub or the swimming pool. But it's a following in obedience we have to follow in obedience. It's the only thing that pleases God. So these demons start building a case. Revelations are taken to the Father. You've got to look at yourself. Does he got a case on you? You've got, you got to be honest. He, God has no pleasure with, the, with those that shrink back. The first people in Revelations chapter 22 that are thrown into hell, they're not the child molesters. They're not the murderers. The first people thrown in hell are the cowardice. 
Who are the cowardice? Those are the, those are the ones that were born again. How, you can't call an unbeliever a cowardice. He was a sinner by nature. He sinned by his own nature. He only had a flesh nature, therefore he couldn't do anything but sin. He's talking to those people that knew. He's talking to the people that knew. So we have to understand that Jesus Christ is our high priest. We have access to the Father. He reconciles us to the Father by what he did. We are saved by what he did and our faith in what he did. He became sin who knew no sin. He shed his blood, the sinless blood of the Son of God. It was tempted in every way, but he had no sin. He bore the sins on the cross of Calvary. He took our place, and his blood was shed for the remission of sins. After he rose from the dead, he's at the right hand of the Father, which is the seat of power, and it is the mercy seat. So you can have mercy to be forgiven and wash in the blood. And then in exchange, he doesn't say, now, come on, go out there and do your best. Let's see if you can try better. I'm going to give you another shot out there in this sin-stained world. No, he says, now you can have power. Because he told the disciples, there's no need of you trying to go out and preach until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, then you will receive power to be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. But it says during the time when Jesus told them, to wait and tarry till the Holy Spirit came. It said they were continually in church, they were happy, full of joy, and they were continually praising God. So just because you're happy and praising God doesn't mean you have power. You know you have power when it comes from the Father, when you can do something you couldn't do previously, and you're actually able to help somebody. You're able to minister. You're able to preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, make a disciple. And you do it not through your own human power. That wouldn't work. You do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you learn to lean on him, acknowledge him in all your ways. He begins as a minister to make your path straight. You begin to have these divine appointments. You begin to, to, begin to have scriptural recall. The Spirit says, I remember the, one of the first people I led to the Lord. And the Lord told me all about it. I just cussed out an airport. This thing would have got you tased, but this is in the 90s. You get tased these days. But back in the day, you could talk crazy, and I would fly with these tickets, and we had these hustles with tickets, and I would go on the, on the red-eye flight. And then the lady would go, oh, you'll have to come back and buy a new ticket. I'm like, oh, I was ready to go take a nap and wake up in my hometown. Oh, I'm going to let you in. And they would, but this happened to be a dude. Goes, dude, you ain't getting on with this ticket. You got to wait till the ticket office opens at 6 in the morning and buy another ticket. And I said, man, I didn't like it, and I gave him a few four-letter choice words. I'd been saved about, about four months. Then I didn't want to pay. I said, how much is it to Buckhead City or whatever in Atlanta where my buddy had a condo? And someone said, $40. I went down the line to see who would do it for 20 I got a guy who said, hey, jump in the cab first because these other cabbies won't like it. Got in there, got a $20 ride. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes on me. He comes on me. This guy has all these questions biblically. And I got all the answers. At first, I'm so dumbfounded with having all the answers. I said, wow, I can't believe my brain's this good. Man, I got a good brain. I got good scriptural recall. Man, I'm clicking on all cylinders. Wow, to go from cussing someone out to this is impressive to myself. And then I started realizing, wait a minute. I don't know these scriptures. I heard them, but I don't know these. I I'm now humbled halfway through. The guy receives Jesus. If you've watched me for a while, I'm not a big hugger. This guy at the end, after gets saved, hugs me, and he's crying on my neck, and I don't even have one cringe. I mean, there's wet stuff. I, I had to wipe it off. I never, I never got upset about it. I rolled with it. So, so then when I walk away, oh, here's a key point. I said, I can't believe that just happened. And I heard God's voice, and I understand if you were next to me, you wouldn't have heard it, but, boy, it was as loud as he was talking from the sky. I said, I can't believe that happened. And he said, yeah, imagine what I could do if you would only get out of the way. I was in the way. The call was real, but my flesh is in the, in the way. You can't serve your flesh and walk by the Spirit. They're contrary, the Bible says, to one another. So therefore, it says you've got to crucify the flesh if you want to do this. He was telling me in a very loving and gentle way of the father to his son who just got born again four, four months earlier, you have to die. You have to follow me. You have to do what my word says. There's no free, free passes. I'm showing you what I called you to do. I set up a divine appointment for you. I used the Holy Spirit to teach you and remind you of everything that I had spoken. He gave you the scriptural recall. It was him inside of you. Are you interested in this life? Well, it's going to take a life of sacrifice to do it on a regular basis. 
That was my first introduction to that understanding. So now that we know the scriptures, we can go to the Father. We can go to the Son and we can petition and you can ask him for stuff. You don't have it. You don't have to earn it. You can't earn it. You can't just study the Bible and have a teaching gift like Mike Smith. You can't just, just understand and have wisdom. It says, if anyone lacks wisdom, he must ask of God who gives liberally and without reproach. But when he asks, he must believe. Because if he, if he prays and he doesn't believe, that man is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. So he shouldn't think he should receive anything. So that's telling you right now, faith is singular-minded. Yes, God's going to come through. This is how God works. I, God's not going to change and bend for me, so I'm going to have to be the one that changes because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So now we got that access. Now we can get our help, and the devil doesn't want you to know you have access. He doesn't want to know you, you can get help whenever you need that help. He wants you to believe that you have to do it with works. You have to do it with intellectual superiority. You have to do it with some kind of penance of, of taking so many days off of sin, a fast, or whatever. No, you come, it says, in your time of need. Now, will he chastise you? Will he discipline you? Absolutely. The Bible says if you live life sinning and you're not chastised, you're an illegitimate son. Don't ever be jealous of someone that doesn't get the chastising of the Lord. They keep sinning. They keep prospering, getting more girls, more cars, more money, more fame, more laughs. Don't, don't be envious of them. They're not legitimate sons because God said he scourges and disciplines everybody that's a true son. He said, which one of you who has a son doesn't discipline him? You do it as, as you see best fit for that time so that you can train him. Yeah, there was a time I spanked all my kids. I'm proud of it. And there's one right there. He, he, hey, at 12, I, I, I think he was the last one to keep getting spanked. My daughter, I didn't spank her past 10. She was smart. Are you going to really do that? I mean, she was way too smart. At, I, she probably, I probably stopped at, at 9, 8. My, my other son, probably 11. But, hey, I was doing it for their best interest. You can't do that. You can't throw eggs at schools. You can't, you can't go out and do those things. You can't steal that. It's like one day I found my son, and he, he had an inch-thick roll of 20s. Where'd you get that? Oh, man, I got that from Christmas. I got, well, you get $100 for Christmas. I got that from my brother. What, you've been saving for four years? He had just been finding 20s. He had this little col collector ability to collect 20s. He didn't want fives and tens. They were 20s. Hey, you, you have to do it. Well, God has to discipline you, but you know what takes you out of the discipline? Oh, the point I'm trying to get here is when you grumble and you murmur and you complain about your situation, about the way people treat you, about your finances, about the church, about the country, or whatever it is you're complaining about, you're disciplining yourself. You already took yourself out of the will of God. You already took yourself out of the race to win the prize. You have pulled yourself out, and you were stuck. So someone will say, well, why is all this happening? Why isn't anything happening? Because you chose to exclude yourself from the word of God. He's working with willful participants, people who want to serve him. The devil works off with slaves. He puts people in bondage, and he makes them do his will. The Lord works with free will participants. And everyone has free will. It's a spiritual law. He will not violate your free will. He won't make you worship him. He won't make you serve him. He won't make you get delivered. You have free will and free choice. He's encouraging you. And then when you begin to do good, a lot of people say, well, why am I being disciplined? Because you're a true son. And you need to get in alignment. That man's ministry that came had to be shut down because he was going to repeat himself with a bunch of people who saw themselves less than, not good enough, barely getting by by the seat of their pants, although they had three ministries. They were on the category of unworthiness. At any moment, they could be knocked off and worthless. No, that would have been repeated, and that can't be repeated. That can't be retaught and re-emulated. That is sin that had to be dealt with. So the Lord, because he was a true son, had to chastise him by stopping all his ministries until he took care of that issue. James chapter 1, verse 2 and through 8. Brethren, he says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. I, I'm not lying. I got to be honest with you. Before deliverance, I read that, and I said, let's get the skim reading. 
I'm not going to count trials joy. I hate it when preachers talked about the mountaintops, but every time you get to the mountaintop, you got to go back down to a valley. I'm like, bro, save that valley. Let's stay up on the mountaintops. Let's operate up there. That's good. You were doing so good. I was with you until after I've worked so hard to get up there. I got to go back down and learn again. Oh, but it's a spiritual fact. God's not going to raise you up in the spirit realm until you pass test. You can't be raised up with someone that doesn't know the word of God. If you aren't diligent to show yourself approved, approved to who? Approved to God. I'm ready. I read your word. Rightfully dividing it, understanding the Old Testament types and shadows, understanding the physical realities in, in the New Testament, understanding grace and mercy, understanding atonement, understanding his ability to help, understanding his provision, understanding that we do have power and authority over the spirit world, but we need to stay under the hedge of his protection like that Psalms 91 Peter was reading. We got to stay in our protection. I wouldn't go around calling the devil names. You know, uh, there's no need. It's not going to help anybody get delivered faster. It's not going to help you gain more power and authority. Just stay with helping people. Stay with kicking him out like a snake and a scorpion out of your house. Get up and get rid of him like a snake and a scorpion. Get him up out of your mind and your body. Fight through. Ask God for help. I need to get in the Bible. I need to read the Bible. I want to be excited about the Bible. I want to see something new in the Bible. I want to go into the spirit of revelation. I want to grow in all knowledge and truth. I want to have discernment. You got to begin to ask him things. But you got to also count it joy when you fall into a trial because I believe that you don't have to stay there too long. I believe God is in the quick turnaround business and the quicker your attitude is, the quicker with your expectation. I remember when I first saw Mike become a human. I thought he was Superman. I was like, you cast out devils, you're like a cyborg. Man, you walk around, the devil's scared of you, you bark, he runs. And one day, not long into it, one of his ministry per partners turned on him. And I never said an ill will, never had an ill thought about the guy. The guy gave, I never read a book until I read the Bible. When I got saved, I've read a few. I've probably started 20 and completed one. But when this guy comes along, I said, what are you, can you give me some info? And Mike was always busy. He'd be, I said, yeah, yeah, read these books. I'd read one, bring it back. Read one. I read four or five books he gave me. I respected the guy. He was doing something. He was right, uh, Mike's right-hand guy. And when it all went down, he threatened to beat me up. He said, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. I'll kick him in the legs. I mean, he even graphically wrote out, I would take me down. I said, what? And he was mad at Mike. He's mad at the whole thing. He never came back. And I remember Mike sitting there and we had a meeting before the thing. And he's like, I think the guy sent it to everyone who knew the email. And he's like, did anyone know about this? I said, no, nah, I didn't know nothing. I thought we were friends. I thought he liked me. <laughs> Long story short, we're all human. And when people turn on us and people walk away and people that you invested into and people you financially supported and all these things and they turn their backs on you to find somebody else that's a better minister, a better ministry, a better friend, and they leave you, you can't take an offense. It's a trial. It's a trial to see, are you really a servant of all? Are you really a servant to please God? Or are you in it for what they give you in return? It's not always money, but a lot of times they'll give you positive affirmation. They'll give you encouragement. They'll say kind things. Uh, what you did to other people will kind of build you up. Well, God will test to see if those things are really what you're in it for. Are you in it for him? So there's all kinds of trials in different ways in, in ministry with our family. But you have to understand the only way you can count it joy is if you went through it with a positive attitude, one you never had before. It's probably the same thing that you dealt with over and over again. It could be a temptation to somebody sexually, temptation when you're away to log on to something where someone couldn't see, whatever it is, a temptation to take advantage of somebody because you have an open-ended contract and you fill out the digits, whatever it is. But this time, when you go through it and you do the right thing, you pass. Once you pass, you go to another level. You have been trusted. You have been faithful with a little. If you are faithful with a little, then you can be trusted with more. But if you can't be faithful with a little, you don't get any more. These are spiritual laws. 
Most people don't understand spiritual laws. And because you got a cute smile and you were mama's little girl, you think you can just kind of do some things. Nobody can do some things. This devil's mounting a case up against you. He's the accuser of the brethren, and he's writing your stuff down, and he's watched it all. And I believe he reads minds because he's in minds. He's in your mind. Are you kidding? People that are really infected, I've put my hand on 100 people, and I literally feel thumping in their head, like something is the inside. Thunk, 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 thunk. A lot of ministers will tell you about it. Those, those demons are fully in the head. I believe they, they send thoughts, someone reacts. Even if they couldn't see in there and know exactly the thoughts that were passing through, they, they, they send you thoughts, they see your emotions, they send you other thoughts, watch those emotions. It's all recorded. They're super intelligent. So it's 100% as if they can read minds, if they can. They know exactly what you're thinking. They know exactly how you react. They know what makes you mad, what makes you upset, what incites you, what makes you feel lonely, what makes you feel depressed. They know it all. So you have to go through a trial to what? To overcome the enemy, to overcome yourself and your flesh, to overcome your past failures. So you have to take it as a, as a challenge and that you're going to get a reward. You go to college, you get a degree. Well, hopefully you don't have to work for 20 bucks an hour. You can make 25. I mean, they're starting you pretty low. But one day, like all my friends who went to college, they're very successful. It took them 20 years. 30, 40 years into it now, they're running them companies. It pays off, and you can't get in those jobs without passing the test and having a college degree. You can be the best sales guy, the best communicator, but you can't get that job without a degree, right? So you pass tests. There's rewards in the natural. You pass tests. There's rewards in the spirit world. So you got to see it that way. And he says, knowing that the testing of what? It's a test of your faith. That you're believing of the things, there's evidence of it, but you haven't seen it. You haven't seen these ministries that were prophesied about you and over you and gifts that, that you feel that are in you. And you've seen signs of them operating that were good and helping people. He says, but watch this. Here's how you do it. But let patience have its perfect work. How do you endure trials? You've got to have some godly patience. If anyone lacks wisdom and he can ask of God and he gives it to him liberally, if you don't have any patience, you can ask Jesus from the mercy seat to give you some power that contains patience. I told you, I used to go to Mike all the time. I'd be amped up. Now I wanted to plead my case and get Mike on my side because someone had wronged me and I wanted to go down and I would tell him everything. I would tell Bill, I would Bill O'Reilly him. You know how Bill O'Reilly used to get you all worked up to believe in wars and, and how you should think and pinheads. And, you know, he was the first one really to be an emanated brainwasher. Well, I would do that to Mike. I'd, I'd Bill O'Reilly him. And Mike would go, it's going to be a great learning experience for you. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I drove all the way down here, and that's what you got? You, you've been in here. You're a professional counselor. you just parading 50 certificates behind you as you're telling me that? Well, he knew where I was. There wasn't no way for him to co-sign what I wanted him to believe. There wasn't no way that he could tell me how to navigate in the spirit realm. you got to learn to trust God through hardships. you got to learn how to trust God through difficult times, even betrayals. I can't coach you. I can't counsel you. I'm not your dad. I'm a brother in Christ, and I had to go through it, and you yourself will have to go through it. Well, God tells you how it's going to go a little bit easier. I feel a whole lot easier. And it wasn't until I got some patience. And then slowly when I began to go have some patience, I went down and a few times I was going to do the same thing. Only this time I had a better case, so he better listen and give me some better advice. And I got there and I sat down. We started talking. And the voice of God said, don't even embarrass yourself. Go home. Don't even tell him this story. You know the answer. Don't do this again. And he said, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? I, I forgot. And I went home. Why? Because I had learned to be patient. Since I was learning to be patient, once you're patient, then God can talk to you. You can't hear God. His voice is the supernatural voice. That works when you'll open up your heart, when you'll operate with faith, when you listen. Oh, so I was finally learning to hear God so God himself could comfort me in my time of trouble and then begin to lead and guide me. So he says this. He says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So some of you don't have any patience because you're not counting it joy when you fall into a trial and you haven't been passing the test. That's why you're riddled with impatience. That's why you're on dating sites. That's why you're trying to date someone and make somebody your husband. 
I've been in the business long enough dealing with men, and there ain't no woman on the planet that can fix a man. You ain't got the skill, and no woman ever had the skill. They're a, they're a creature in themselves, and the minute they want to change, they'll change, and then when they don't want to change, they ain't going to listen to you to change. They'll lip service and act like they're going to change for you because they want what they want from you, and they want it a little bit nicer, but they're not really going to change. They got to want to do it on their own. So you got to have patience. Patience will have a perfect work. He'll take you to another, another level. And he said that you may be perfect and complete. Oh, wow. You can, you can go into some perfection. You can go in and complete a test of your faith by what? Patience. You're going to keep having to have levels of patience, but you'll be excited about the levels of patience beginning to produce in you. Because why? Because you'll start hearing from God. There's times I wanted to start, and I said, no, I cannot let that go. I'm feeling that my mouth automatically wants to run. It wants to say these things. This is the way it's been operating since I can remember, but it's got to stop if I'm really going to do what he's called me to do on a regular basis and have some peace in my mind and pass. So I learn how to control my mouth through patience. Then he completes us. And then what I talked about earlier, if you lack wisdom, then you ask of God, but you got to do it in faith. Then we jump down to verse 12, and he says this, blessed is the man who endures temptation. He's not saying, blessed, good job, I'm proud of you. You, you, you passed that wave. No, he said you're blessed. Blessed is the man. Everybody wants to be blessed. It's not a pat on the back, blessed. It's like you begin to walk into the blessings now. I can trust you. God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He'll answer all your prayers if it's according to his will. You, you, those are the blessed ones that get their prayers answered. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he's been approved, he'll receive the crown of life which been, has been promised to those who love him. Then he goes down and says, hey, I'm not throwing nothing at you. I'm a good God. I'm a loving God. I'm not here to tempt you. I'm not here to crush you. I'm not here to let this devil just smash you. I'm, I'm working for you. I'm trying to help you get rid of some things. You got this sin nature. Adam did you dirty. It was passed down to you. You were born in this sin-stained world. It's got to be my way, and I'm going to show you how to get up out of it and live in victory. And you have to know this. When you're tempted, let no one say, I am tempted by God. He says, God can't be tempted with evil, nor does he tempt anyone. He says, but each one of you, when you're tempted, it says, and you're drawn away. Uh-oh, now you're tempted. Now it's pulling you. Sin's got to pull, whether it's to say something, whether it's to do something, whether it's to start going down the wrong road. It says this, once you're drawn away and desire by your own desire and enticed, he says, and when the desire has conceived, uh-oh, now you're moving. What's conceived? You're running into the spirit world. How could it have life? How could it conceive? How could it bring into, into being something? It says, Unless it was the spirit world. It says when de desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. Oh, now you're sinning. Now a Christian is doing something against God's word. And then it says when it's full grown, it brings forth death. If you don't stop it, your, your marriage will be dead. You can lose your career. You can lose your health. You can lose your mind. And you can lose your soul. So you better stop sinning. It's what that's telling you. And he's saying, I'm not doing it to you. You know how many people have told me over the years of ministry, why is God doing this to me? I've heard men who were, they were not mentally ill. They, they had good jobs, good family. Why did God give me this porn demon? I couldn't believe the devil actually got him to believe that God gave him a porn demon. He believed it. That was one when I first started hearing those talkers. We don't talk to demons, but they'll tell on themselves. He's mine, and he believes everything I say. And he fell to the ground, and his buddy was preppy guy with the titleist uh, a golf hat, and they had golf shirts like they had just went golfing before they came down to the <laughs> revival. He's looking at him like, no way. My buddy's talking. A demon's talking through him. He couldn't believe it. After he was done, he goes, hey, I watched porn, too. It, check and see if there's anything in there. His weren't talking. He just confessed, and he coughed them out like the normal routine. But he saw that thing and said, whoa, I don't want nothing to do with that. So demons will tell on themselves, but don't try to talk them. They'll only lie to you. They'll only trick you. 
And so you just tell them, you're in charge. We got the Holy Ghost. We got the spirit of wisdom. We got knowledge. We got the discernment of spirits. We got the helper. And he's the truth. So I don't have to worry of some demons telling me the truth, making some man a, a medium to conjure up the spirit world and get some investigation. No, nah, I'm not doing it. I'm going to talk to Jesus, and he's going to navigate me on through to victory because he called me to help people. So he says this. He says, in order, then, hey, you better watch out, right, that if it gives birth to sin, sin will bring forth death. Then we skip down to verse 21. He says, therefore, lay aside, get rid of all filthiness and the overflow of wickedness. You can't have filthiness and wickedness as a born-again believer. That's not going to work. If you've you got wickedness and filthiness in your life, you've got to repent tonight, and you've got you to gotta make your peace with God, and uh, you've got to get delivered. And then it says this, and then receive with meekness. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. In due time, he'll raise you up. Receive with meekness the implanted word. He put the word in you, he says, which is able to save your soul. Then he goes on to say, hey, I want you to be a doer of the word. I want you to hear it, and I want you to do it. If you hear it and you don't do it, you'll go into self-deception. I don't want you to deceive yourself. I want you to get the things done that I've called you to do. I want you to believe that I called you to do them. I want you to believe that I've empowered you to do them. And I'm going to work through you to see these things accomplished. I'm going to help you. Now, verse, let's go down to a uh, book. Of, that was James. Let's go over to a book of Hebrews, chapter 2. He says this. We're going to give... He says, therefore, let us give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we drift away. Okay? You got to give an earnest look at this. You got to give an honest evaluation of what you're hearing, what you read in the scripture. Because if you don't, if you're not honest with it, then you, you can't say, I'm going to shelf this scripture. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that off. I'm going to do that. I should do that, but I need more from God. I'm not ready right now. You can't do that. You're not going to stay where you are. It says, least we drift away. The minute you pause the word of God, you are in a current. And it, your rudder isn't being controlled. The wind blowing your sails are blowing you in the wrong direction. And then at the end of it, it warns you in Hebrews chapter 3. He says, beware, there least, beware lest there be in you any evil heart of unbelief. The minute you pause doing the word of God and you begin to drift away, you can run into an evil heart of disbelief because you refuse to be a doer of the word you heard it but for whatever reason you refuse to do it you drifted away you can find yourself with an evil heart of unbelief and you can depart from the living God that's what it says right there in Hebrews chapter 3 12 and then it says this he says while it is said today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion that's what it's trying to do it's trying to get you the enemy is smart. He'll love you to smoke crack, sleep with hookers, go to strip clubs, gamble all your money away, get to punk rock and do some punk rock dancing, bang your head on a rock. But he can't get most people to do these things, but he can get a lot of them to drift away. That's why he's called the prince of the power of the air, the spirit of disobedience, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience, where the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. He's got a wind that when people are idle, he can drift them away. Then what happens? Oh, man. Then Paul said he turned over Hymenaeus and Alexander to Satan. He said they became shipwrecked. And now they were opposing God's word and they were teaching false doctrines. These are people at one point that were listening to the word of God. He came around. He's the chief apostle to the Gentiles. They're listening. But what happened? There was an evil heart of disbelief. They failed to understand. They had to pass tests. They began to say, hey, I hear the word, but I'm not going to do it. First drifting, and then they suffered shipwreck, and they were turned over to Satan. And Paul said, I turned them over to Satan that they'd learn not to blaspheme. I hope you're getting the picture. Sin, it says right there, sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. I can't stop sinning unless I get the power of God. I, in my sin, flesh nature, I just want to sin. I had a plan for my life. I hope my wife isn't watching this. She watches about one out of five. <laughs> but I'm like, hey, one thing I felt a man had to have was a good-looking woman. And uh, good-looking to me was probably about, you know, 25 to 35. 
So by the time you get to 35, you got to re-up and get you a younger one. So I figured at 35 or 40, I'm going to go ahead and catch one of those younger ones. In order to have those, you're going to have to have some muscles. Uh, I had already sh saving up from a hair transplant. I had to use that for bail money one time when my buddy got me out of jail. But I was preparing for an old man to get a young woman. And I knew that you had to have money. So I was steadily at work to have money. Because what? I was building in my mind my kingdom on this earth. And if my kingdom's on this earth, if this is all it is, then I'm going to do what seems best for me. What's the most pleasurable? What gets you the most uh, enjoyment out of life? What is the most respected from your fellow brothers and sisters? Or at least your fellow brothers, not sisters. They don't respect that. Never have. But the brothers do. At least the sinful guys I used to hang around with. So I made up a way that seemed right to me. But in the end, the Bible is clear. Those plans end in death. So by the mercy of God, he comes in. I'm on the auction block of slavery. I'm going to hell. And when I'm going to hell, I'm making all kinds of money, and I'm happy, and I, I'm not depressed. I'm not lonely. I don't have sleepless nights. I feel good about myself. I feel good about the things I got, the things I can purchase, the friends that I'm around. I'm happy with all of it. I don't have a negative aspect of my life. And I run in to my friend at the time who was a backslidden Christian at the time, but he knew the Bible. He says, you ain't born again. I said, no, I thought I was just like you, a gambler and a pot smoker. What, are you going to be religious now? But when he was speaking the word, it was piercing because the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. It doesn't matter who's speaking it. He had experienced God, so he was speaking it through faith. He had got born again as a teenager about nine or ten years earlier, eight years earlier from the time we were having this talk. And so God was using him. I want to save you now before this gets too deep. I want to save you now before someone kills you, and then you go to hell. So God, in his mercy, steps in and rescues us. But it doesn't just mean you're a good person, a great person. You're like everybody else. You start out as a baby. Everybody's a baby. But here's the warning. you got to go on, and you got to grow up as a person, as a man of God. And it says this, look. He says, there's basic things of the, of, of the Bible. Sins that lead to death, the resurrection from the dead, repentance from dead works, goes on, names a few. He says, these are the elementary things. But we need to go on to the deep things of God, which is the meat of the gospel, for the milk is for the babies. But when you grow up and you do these things, you understand them, you'll grow up, and you can go to the meat of the gospel. And the meat of the gospel is to have some discernment, understanding good from evil. So what does that tell you right out of the beginning? I didn't know this was a spiritual war and Satan was around. I didn't know Satan was accusing me and building a case against me. I didn't know that every time I was thinking negative, I was listening to demons. So what was happening? I was under grace. Grace covers you and he helps you and he holds you in your arms until, until you can get the meat or until you can get the milk and you can adequately get fed. But now you got to go on now. I got to trust you with what... What I've deposited in you, I want to see you stand on it. I want to see you do it. I want to see you do it alone. I don't, just because everyone does it in your small group and they go out door knocking and winning souls, that's great. That's how we start. But now I want you to do it. I want you to go to the highways and byways. I want you to pray and go to Circle K and wait for me to send somebody to you who's desperate and going to kill themselves because I want to use you so you can stop a suicide. You have to begin to discern good from evil. You have to be led by the Spirit. You can't just say, stay in the arms of the Lord. He's raising people up. He raises them up fast with the Holy Spirit. We got two table waiters, Philip and Stephen. Like, hey, I can't deal with these women. They're bickering over this food. We, we got we to gotta stick to the prayer and, and saving the world. Give us 12 men that are full of the Holy Spirit. They got a good reputation. They're full of wisdom. We'll appoint them this business. Two of them go on later in the book of Acts, and they're moving in signs, wonders, and miracles. They're powerhouse evangelists. I believe, I believe uh, Stephen is the same chapter. If it's not, it's the next chapter he, in the book of Acts. It's, it's happening fast. Why? The faster you can pass the test, the faster that you can be faithful, the little you can be trusted with more. Once you get the word, you understand how it works. You trust God. You lean not on your own understanding, but you acknowledge him in all your ways. Oh, you're learning to trust. You're learning the great commission. You're learning the relationship with Jesus. That it's not just you in this world. He's with you. He's not leaving you and forsaking you. He's, he's working on the inside. He's comforting you. 
Yeah, and unfortunately, he does have to discipline us. Unfortunately, you have to learn not to play with the devil. You have to learn. I used to play with firecrackers. They'd sell them for a week in Nebraska. And we started with these lady fingers, and we'd drive to Iowa our way. We'd get inch and a halfers, and pretty soon it was, you'd light them with those little punks, they were called, those little things. You'd light, sh bang. Pretty soon it was, sh bang. Pretty soon it was, how close could I light it and let it go before it explodes? But every year, I wouldn't get one completely off. And it would either swell both of your fingers with a huge blister or at least one. If you got it to the point where it was only one finger touching, it would only be one blister. But if it got you, boom. So what did I have to learn the hard way? You had to learn the hard way. Playing with fire will burn you. Yeah, that was the end of firecracker day. For two days, you would put ice around your fingers and wrap a little uh, paper towel around it to hold it on there. You, you look, you got to learn. You got to learn not to be sexual and moral. You got to learn not to do drugs and smoke marijuana. You got to learn not to associate with the world and be a friend of the world. You start becoming an enemy of God. Why? You start setting sail in your disobedience. You, you, you're, you're catching a drift of the prince of the power of the air. You're on your way to shipwreck if you don't stop that at one point. We're called out people. The Jews were called out people. They wouldn't even go into a house of a Gentile and have a meal. We're not under the law. We're under grace, so we can go down and sit because if someone's making some pagan food, we're supposed to eat it unless they say that it was offered up to an idol. Then for their conscience sake, we're not supposed to eat it, but we know that an idol is nothing. Paul said what they offered, the Gentiles offered to idols are offering it to demons. I ain't got no fellowship with demons. I'll eat that meat. God made that meat, not no demon, but for their conscience, I ain't going to eat it. So... We're supposed to save souls, right? But the Jews didn't have any fellowship with anybody that wasn't a Jew. God's people were always set apart. He calls us out of the world to separate us. And we're not supposed to be friends of the world. I'm not supposed to be down. I've never been in that casino over there. Uh, that's where I used to live, raised all my kids, right, right by that casino. Casino, Arizona. They got pool parties there, dancing girls in bikinis, but it buffets all you can eat. I've never been in there. Not a friend of the world. I'm not looking for to see that. I don't want to gamble money. I don't want their money. I don't want their $29.99 crab legs. I don't want none of it. I don't drive in their parking lot. Back in the day, boy, I would line up for those, for those uh, crab legs. Oh, yeah, I'd drop 20, 30 gambling to see if I couldn't get lucky and win 500, fooling myself. Oh, yeah, since I'm all lit up in the flesh. Oh, yeah, girls want to wear bikinis. I would count them as freebies. Well, you don't want to wear that. Someone's going to look. I was what? Being saturated and inundated with the world because I had no conscious understanding because I was a milk drinker. I hadn't went to the meat, so I couldn't discern. That's evil. You're to avoid even the appearance of evil. But what was happening? I had to stay in my father's arms under his hedge of protection because I refused to grow. I was learning the Bible. I was preaching some pretty good sermons. I was preaching to myself half the time in those jails. I acted like, oh, yeah, I do this all the time. That's how I live. I was thinking, I need to go home and repent and do this because I was many times just a baby, and God was still using me, though I was a baby, and he was showing me what could be your future, but then there's going to have to be a cost because I'm going to have to let you, my hands off you for a while so you can see where you're really at it happens in here all the time everyone wants to be a demon caster i didn't i said he, he said it what mike never asked me to help nobody till i've been here for at least a month he goes okay all right you're miss okay i'll try you out and i'm like okay you tell me what to do you tell me where to go man you got people in here they got five deliverance like i want to you got those badges i want to be on this team we just blast demons Let's get him. I like this club. Well, I'm like, ooh, I don't, you know he's going to show up at your house. You know, I've been to the bathroom, and I heard somebody open my door, walk right by me, and walk out the door and shut the door. And I said, hey, my son, were you up? He said, no, I'm just getting up. I was upstairs sleeping. So I was, uh, someone will walk through your house to pay a visit. TV can't catch you slipping so he can slip on in. And you find yourself real sick. And I've seen it. And I've seen them never come back. I've seen them lose their minds. I took this real serious. 
I took this real serious. I, I, I've been in a, a lot of fist fights in Nebraska. We fist fought since I was in third grade. It, it's the culture in Nebraska. We don't stab people. We don't kick them when they're down. We don't three on one them. It was one little guy against another little guy. It was no real big deal. No one said, what were you doing fighting? Teacher's like, you better do that off property. It was the culture. <laughs> well, I learned... When I was in seventh grade and someone's talking down to you that's got a full beard who's 17, still in junior high, that you need to keep your mouth shut because he will thump you. He has a vein in his bicep. You're still trying to find a bicep on your body. I, I kind of understood fighting. I kind of understood categories. I kind of understood your level. So if I'm going to cast out devils, I better be on that level. And here's the big difference maker is a lot of people can work off the corporate anointing because Pete and Kelly went ahead and prayed all day and went ahead and labored five hours apiece. And now there's a corporate anointing and Mike doesn't ask for money. He asked for prayers and 5,000 people remembered to pray and they remembered to say, hey, Lord, could you help somebody down on Thursday like I was helped? I'm so grateful you delivered me. I know someone's going to come that's looking to get delivered. Will you go ahead and answer their prayer and help them like you helped me? And they're operating under a corporate anointing with a bunch of labor behind the scenes that they, they don't necessarily know because they're new and they're trying it, and that's good. We all got to try. But then the real test is can you bump into somebody on the highways and byways and get their demons out? Can you get away from this place and get your own demons out <laughs> and be honest with yourself? I remember when I started doing self-deliverance, I'm like, what is this? What is this? I remember one time I was coming home from preaching in the jail. I was thinking, man, I wasn't being too boastful, but I was thinking, man, T.D. Jakes couldn't have one-upped me tonight. The Holy Ghost was there, and that thing was operating. And all of a sudden, man, the anointing's still on me, and all of a sudden, stuff's coming out of me making some god-awful sounds, and I have no idea what it is. I said, this is weird. I ain't telling anybody about this. <laughs> They're going to think I'm nuts, not qualified, or I did something I'm, I didn't do. This is weird. Well, what was happening was that anointing God was showing me. You need to learn to work this anointing. When I'm on you and it's your time, I want to do something in you. And I'm going to do something in you and through you more than you expect, even ask or imagine. But you got to let me in by asking me. I was asking for everybody else, so he was just in his mercy saying, I'm going to give you a little more than you understand, but it was giving me then the revelation that there's more. There's more. There's a way that's far above my ways. There's thoughts that are so far above our thoughts. If you know the Bible by the back of your hand, you think you know God's will, but it says your thoughts, even your interpretations and understanding of the scriptures often is way below the true power and the true authority and the true love and the true mercy and the true access that you have the Jesus and the power that you can get when you need it. That revelation is far above most people. And I still, I'm going to grow till the day I die. Because he says the end product, that's one of those things that scares you when you read it. He says he's going to shape and mold you into Jesus Christ. Me? What? The sinless son of God? Well, that's he's showing you I'm going to forever work in you until I call you home. It's never done. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep adding. That means Reinhard Bonnke at 80 years old after leading 47 million people to Jesus was still growing in the revelation of Jesus Christ, still understanding about his access to the power of God and his revelation to the meat and the discerning from good and evil, all these things. He was still growing. So we got to have that mindset. He says, for the word... Spoken through the angels, proved steadfast, and every transgression of disobedience received a just reward. There's a reward for disobedience in the spirit world. Scary. So if it has a just reward, I need an advocate. Thank God Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father, and he's helping me. He's helping you. He wants to help you. We can't make it unless he helps us. And then you know what he says he'll do? He says, when you get in the word of God, he'll start. There's some things that just don't fly anymore. Do you know some of the best out of 20 years, God showed me two of the most extreme people. 
a, a, a man that was so mentally ill he couldn't even talk. One person, I shook everyone's hand when they came into my best ability. Some preacher didn't pre shake my hand when I was first saved. I felt a little offended. And I said, I'm going to shake everyone's hand when I'm a minister. I shook everyone's hand in those jails. I looked at them in the eye. I welcomed them. I wanted them to let them know I cared about them. And one dude out of all 20 years, one dude didn't know how to shake the hand. He was so gone, he just saw everyone else doing something, so he stuck out like four limp fingers, and I shook his fingers. He became a powerhouse man of God that could cast out demons. He could, he could make disciples. He could get healings. Another one was a sex offender that his sin was so heinous, I won't even mention it. Shameful to mention what the disobedient do in secret. He became a new creature in Christ. He was a proficient Holy Ghost man of God. Okay, so God showed me the true, the greasiest sin, evil sin you could be in, and the person who had no mind becoming powerful ministers. He showed me that by his divine hand because he wanted to let me know that everybody else was going to be in the middle of that. You are all, you're not over where this dude is, I promise you. And you're not nowhere near where that guy was in depravity and the loss of his cognitive function. Yet God delivered him. Yet God healed him. The common denominator was they were getting delivered. All of them continued to get delivered again and again and again, and they didn't care what other people thought. Most people will shut down after one or two, because after one or two, you start becoming a small group leader in the pod, and you don't want anyone to look down on you that you're hacking up demons. And so they pull back, and they don't finish their full deliverance for fear of man for fear of the unknown, and they want to just control what they were able to use, and they think, well, what I'm doing is better than what I used to do because I used to do nothing, so I'm just going to keep doing this. It makes sense to their mind, but the devil has got them to shrink back. But these two guys realized, I can't believe God's doing this. I would tell them, you're going to be a powerhouse disciple. In my mind, I wasn't saying in 100% faith. I was saying, well, that's what the Word says. I didn't say that. I said, you are going to be they, Me? You think so? I said, yeah, with God, all things are possible. Paul, possible. Paul was the chief sinner. He was the worst. Yeah, I'm in. They believed it. They bought into it, and they became it. It blew me away because I never saw it, and I would have thought, man, these are the least likely couple characters, if I was honest. But God was expanding me. Why? So that I could help you. I could help you so you could get the vision not just to get delivered, but to go on and be a disciple and keep calling on God for everything you need so you can do exactly what you want to do because he put the desires of you in your heart already when you were born again and your giftings are in your spirit man and they will come out and they will do good things and help people. So that's what we're getting delivered for and we're going to, Jesus will wipe that slate clean. When you really repent, He'll wipe that slate clean. He'll take every IOU that that devil's been trying to bring up to, you, to him and accuse. He will tear that up. If you'll tear up the IOU for yourself and forgive yourself, if you'll forgive those other people that turned on you and did you unjustly, he'll do it for you. That's a good thing to have the blood of Jesus wash over your sins where they're counted against you no more. But you know what sins he doesn't forgive? The ones you don't ask him. The ones that you want to hide under the rug. The one you want to just set idle on and deal with them later. Those are the ones he won't forgive. He won't forgive anything you don't ask him to forgive. That's a good feeling. That's an incredible feeling. Remember how good you used to feel? When you first got saved, you knew those sins weren't counted against you anymore. You knew that the blood had washed them away. You can get the same thing if you open up your heart and you ask him. Then we'll forgive everybody. Rip up the IOU. They owe you money. They owe you apology. They owe you, I'm sorry, they owe you tears. Rip it up. They don't owe you nothing. He forgave you what you received. Freely give. You got forgiveness when you confess your sin. Give it away. And then we'll operate in power and authority. That's the test we're going to pass today. 
count it a joy when you face a trial. You got a trial because you got in a jam with depression, with anxiety, with fear, with losing your calling, with losing your hope, not being a hearing, hearing a doer. You even got into self-deception. Somehow he's blinded your mind to some certain things. Well, hey, we can get it back and we can tell the devil no. Whatever you open the door to the enemy, if it came down through a generational curse, if it came through you being victimized, if it came through you opening the door through your own willful sinning, once you repent, the door is shut. You can throw him out. He's a trespasser. Once you forgive, the door is shut. You can throw him out. He's a trespasser. I'll show you how to do it. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you. We come to you in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you for sending your only begotten son. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were willing to come. You stepped down from your seat in heaven and robed yourself in humanity. And Lord, you lived the life I was required to live and you died the death I deserve. Thank you for the beautiful exchange. Thank you for the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. Lord, I got myself into some sins. I've gotten myself with a bad attitude. I've, I've quit and I've shrank back. Lord, I've, I'm so discouraged and dejected. I've, I've taken offense. I've gotten some addictions, Lord. I've got myself financially in destitution and disarray. I, I, I need mercy, Lord. I'm going to confess these sins to you, Lord. I am sorry. I thought I could manage sin. I thought I could dip and dabble with sin and not suffer the consequences. That has proven to be false. And Lord, I'm sorry for messing with sin, sinning against you, hurting you, hurting other people, not living a life that was worthy of the calling in which I have received as a believer. Lord, I'm sorry for the example that I've left my family, that I've left coworkers, that I've left strangers, that I've left at my church. Lord, I apologize for an ungodly example in which I exemplified. Please forgive me, Lord. I thank you for your blood. I thank you that you're hearing the cries of your son, of your daughter tonight. I don't want to be displeasing to you. I know all I have to do is ask you for power. I can't skirt the edges. I can't leapfrog a, a trial. I got to ask you for some power to go ahead and count it joy when I face one. Knowing that when I go through it, I'm going to develop patience. And when I let patience have its perfect work, you're going to be able to use me, Lord, in a mighty way. I'm going to be able to hear from heaven. I'm interested in that life. I'm interested in that future. I'm interested in deliverance. So, Heavenly Father, thank you. And, Lord, since I received this mercy and forgiveness, I do give it to myself. I don't want to be like the preacher who believed a lie that he had to atone for his own sins. Lord, you atone for my sins. I forgive myself. I receive the atonement of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I give grace to all my enemies and my adversaries from my childhood and from my family, from the work, from school, from the neighborhoods, from the highways and byways, from past lovers and acquaintances. I rip up the IOU. I've had sleepless nights. I've been robbed of my joy thinking about these people and what they did. But tonight, I rip up the IOU. And I declare, they owe me nothing. They owe me nothing. I'll give them the same mercy Jesus gave me. Thank you, Lord. Let it be the night that the ministry starts to flow. Your power starts to flow through me as I release these people to you. And I bless them. I pray they'd get born again and saved. And I pray they'd prosper and be in good health as their soul prospers. That's my prayer for these people. Thank you, Lord. Tonight's the night of deliverance. You're the deliverer. You just told us to bind and loose. You told us to cast them out. But, Lord, you're the one that does it. So thank you that you're showing up in this place to help all these men and women of God. Thank you that you're going to help these streamers. They engage into the warfare, and they receive the, the blessing of deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If that's you and you know you've got some deliverance needs, I want you to line up between that black mat and that carpet. Ministry team's going to come forward, and we're going to pray for you. We're going to help you. We're going to use our fresh charged batteries to jumpstart your deliverance.
get this thing going. Get this demon out of your head. Get this financial curse off your body. Get this sickness spirit out of your body. Get this depression out of your head. Get these voices out of your mind. Get these addictions off you in Jesus' name. Come on down. Slide on down this way. You can line up all the way across so we can see you face to face, put our hands on you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready. As people are saying, I'm ready. I'm ready to be a disciple. I'm ready to be free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everybody. We thank you that you gave us power. You gave us power over the devil's power. Oh, you gave us power over the devil's power. He, he tries to hold on. Everybody repented and forgave. He's trying to hold on. Devil, I declare you a trespasser in the, in the bodies of these men and women. In Jesus' name, everybody at this altar, there at the altar of God, you are a trespasser. I bind all your power. I bind hopelessness. I bind despair and hopelessness. I bind mental turmoil. I bind the depraved spirit that sucks the love of God out of these people. I bind your power. I bind these mind-binding spirits over these women in the name of Jesus. You have attacked their minds for years. It's been you, and you blamed everybody else for the attacks. It was you, Satan. I command you to take your hands off their minds in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. I command you to let these women go in Jesus' name. Come out of there right now. The self-hatred. Come out. Self-hatred. Come out. Come out. Not good enough, Spirit. You come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of that mind. Come out of that mind. Come out of there right now. They're not your pin cushions anymore. Come out right now. Take your fiery darts out. There he goes. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Don't stop those coughs. Hey, can we get some buckets in Jesus' name? Come out of there. Take those poisons of bitterness. Come out of there. He tried to tell you to hate yourself. That was his attack. Come out of there right now. You do not hate yourself. You get another chance in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of there. Depression from she was 12. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Fight him. Come out of my mind. Suicidal thoughts since he was a teenager. I command you to come out. Come out of there right now. You're lying to everybody. You are lying to everybody. Devil, you're a liar. I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ to come out. I command every lying spirit to come out. Take a big breath. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Every lying spirit that lied, that twisted the word of God, that tried to make the word of God a lie for them, I declare you are a liar. And I command you to come out in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Every lying spirit, I command you to come out. I command you to come out of her mind right now. I command you to come out of her mind right now. I command you to come out of her mind. You're lying to her. You've been lying to her for years. Come out of there right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there. I command you. Come out of there. Come out of there. There he goes. Come out of there. He's been lying to you. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Don't stop those. That's him. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there, you liar. You've been lying to her in Jesus' name. Come out of there. You've been lying to her about her future. You've been lying to her about the love that God has for her. You've been lying to her that it's over. Come out. Come out. It's not over. Come out. You lie. Come out. Come out. You said her best days were behind her. You're a liar. Come out of there. Come out of there. Go. Go. All that bitterness towards men that double-crossed her. Come out of there right now. All that hopelessness. All that despair. I call you out. I call you out. Go. Go out. Go out. Satan, loosen. Come out right now. I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of there, choker. Come out of there. Come out of there. Spirits from past lovers, come out of there right now. Spirits from past manipulation, fight him now. You tell him what's in there. I want you out. You know what's in there. Tell him what you want out. Come out. All that spirit of infirmity. Devils are trying to give him a heart attack. Devils are trying to make him chronically fatigued. I command you to let him go right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of infirmity, sickness and disease. I charge you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that made him spiritually lazy, you try to put him into a spirit, spiritual stupor, I bind your power. 
I bind your power. Come out of there right now. Come out. Come out of there. Take a big breath, sir. Come out of there. Come out of there. Show me, oh Lord. Show me what's in there. I want to be free in Jesus' name. I want to be free. Right there from your belly. Come on. He'll start going. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Fight him. You have to fight him. You're lying to me. You've been lying to me. I'm coming around. Come out of there. Fight for yourself, sir. Fight for yourself. That's good you want to help people. But today's your day. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. You try to trample his soul since he was a teenage boy, since he was a little boy. The trampler of his soul, I command you out right now. Come out of there right now. The trampler of his soul, come out of there right now. All those word curses, come out. All those belittlements and betrayals, those beatings. I command the spirit that beat him down when he was a kid to come out. Come out of there right now. You go. Come out of there right now. Feeling not good enough. Feeling that nobody loves him. Feeling that nobody cares. Come out of there right now. Go. Go out of there. You're lying and you're stalling. What do you think you need to be delivered from? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Just a decision I made a while back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Willing to forgive yourself? Yeah. What's your first name? Carmen. Carmen? Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray with Sister Carmen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We forgive ourselves. We made a few bad decisions in life. And Lord, she has the mind of Christ. She knows what you want to do, Lord. So it grieves her that she made a wrong choice. So we apologize for that choice again. And we thank you for another chance. Thank you for forgiving us. We forgive ourselves. I bind this critical spirit. You've been nitpicking everything she does. You've been nitpicking everything she ever did, telling her that it wasn't good enough. You're nitpicking her saying how she could have done it better. You've done it since she was a little child. And I bind that spirit in her right now in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of not good enough. You're a liar. God always says, come as we are. He loves us. We're, our, we're his children. He's always helping her. He's always loved her. You've lied to her for years. How she messed everything up. You play all those past failures over and over again in her mind. And I bind your power. And I command you to come out right now. I command you to come out. You're making her exhausted. You're even making her fearful about the baby. Oh, the baby is already blessed. The baby is already coming out healthy. You're trying to get her fearful. You're trying to manifest something bad. I break you in Jesus' name. I let myself go, Lord. I'm a recipient of mercy. Mercy is going to bring me through. Thank you for it, Jesus. Come out. Come out, that critical spirit. Critical spirit and worry. Come out. Worry. Come out of there right now. Constantly worrying. Come out now. Come out of there all the way. Worrying about the baby. Worrying about the money. Worrying about all the things she did wrong. Come out. Worrying about God's love. You've been lying to her. You've been overriding her mind. Come out of there right now, all the way. All the way, all of you. All those transfer spirits from her family. All those critical spirits. All those spirits she's picked up in adolescence and college. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come all the way out. Keep fighting them. You have the anointing. Thank you, Lord. Send the anointing of the Holy Ghost for more. That he's a love man. He's got the power. Come out. I'm tired of being a depressed man. I'm tired of being depressed. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. I break witchcraft. Witchcraft that was prayed over them. Witchcraft from intrigue. Come out right now. Come out of there. Witchcraft from movies. Come out right now. Manipulation. I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. You're trying to manipulate the women of God. I bind your power. I command the false Holy Spirit of condemnation to come out. Come out. This is a false spirit. Come out. You try to accuse them. You try to belittle them spiritually. I bind your power. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Go. Go. Come out of there. Go.
go. Go. I command you, let her go in Jesus' name. Go. 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 Fight him. Go. 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 Come out faster. Come out faster. Come out of her brain. Come out of her brain. Come out of this woman of God's brain. You've been lying in there. Come out. You're lying to her mind in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Keep going. Hey, what do you think he's delivered from? Yeah, what were you in when you were a kid? What kind of bad? Do you ever get anything bad? Bad relationships? Witchcraft? Sorcery? Any types of addictions? I messed with the Ouija board when I was young. A few times? I went through a bad divorce. Oh, what was his name? Bernard. Bernard? Bernard? Oh, you ever forgive him or release him? I believe I have. Oh, okay. Let's start there. What's your name? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this woman of God. I thank you that she set herself apart for you five years back, Lord. But Lord, Bernard, whenever you're, the two become one, divorces are nasty, divorces are taxing, Lord. They rip a part of a person's soul out. Lord, for everything Bernard did, breaking up the family, breaking up the trust, breaking up the house, Lord, we forgive him right now in Jesus' name. He's gone now. And I command Bernard's demons to come out right now in the name of Jesus. Every word curse he spoke over her. Every spirit of doubt and unbelief that he left in this woman. I command you to come out right now. I command Bernard to come out right now in Jesus' name. Any lingering spirit of rejection, any lingering spirit of poverty, any lingering spirit of not good enough, I command you to come out. Come out of there. Take a big breath. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Kundalini, come out of her head. You're going to not hide anymore. I call you out. Witchcraft, sorcery, divination, the occult, fighting and quarreling, blocking this gift she's got of deliverance. Come out of there. You feel anything in your body anywhere? Or do you feel fine? Do you pray in tongues? Do you feel good? I feel shaky. Oh, shaky? Where at in your body? Where's it coming from? Okay, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that you're working. I thank you that you're shaking any spirit in there loose. Thank you, Lord. We repent of playing with the Ouija board in childhood curiosity. Lord, opening that door to the dark side. We repent of that in Jesus' name. I break this performance spirit in the name of Jesus that told her her life consisted of all the things she could accomplish, all the things that she could do, and all the things she could acquire. I bind that that's been shaped and molded from her colleagues, from college classmates and education. I break it in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I command you to come out of there. I command the shaking spirit to break your hold and to come out. I separate you one from another. I forbid you to aid and abet one another. I call out all guilt, all shame, all fear, all loneliness, all depression, all spirits that are holding her back spiritually. And I command you to come out now in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of there. Come out right now. Break out of there right now. Break out of there right now. I command that shaky to come out right now. I command shaky to come out right now. I command shaking and nervousness to come out. Keep going. You're doing good. Come out of there. Come out of there. You're hiding in there. You're hiding under there under all her natural talents that God gave her. You're hiding there in all the things she's able to achieve and all the things she's been able to accomplish. I call you out right now. I declare you will not hide. You will not hide and steal her anointing. You will not hide and steal that gift of faith. I bind your power. Fight him in your mind. Fight him for a minute in your mind. Come out. You won't hide in the man of God. You won't hide. Come out. Come out. Daydreamer. Come out right now. It's a fight. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out. Not good enough. Come out. Mental illness. Come out of that man. Mental illness. We break you. Come out. You're not going to take his mind. Come out right now. I bind all these spirits. Come out right now. I bind you. You won't hide in this man of God. Come out of there right now. Anger. Anger. Come out. Anger and fighting. Self-hatred. Come out. Hating people. Come out. Vengeance and self-hatred. Hatred towards his dad. Come out. Come out all those fighters. Come out fighting with himself. Fighting with church doctrines. Fighting with theology. Fighting with his mother. I command you to come out. Come out. I know who you are. You're a fighting spirit trying to twist him in circles. Come out. Everything he did was by grace and by faith. Come out. Not by perfection and not by superiority. 
It was by putting God first. It's by putting others first. Come out. Come out that mental turmoil. That turmoil in the house. Fighting in the house. Fighting his mother. Fighting himself with thoughts. Being critical about himself. Being critical to his mother. Being critical about ministers and churches. Come out of there. Come out of there. I command you to let him go. Keep coming out. Keep coming out. Send the anointing, Jesus. Yes. Everything you touch gives me a radiated pain. Oh, weird. Oh, okay. He's just attacking your mind, Lord. Spirits are trying to hide in that mind from the ancestral bloodline. Lord, her mother and father cursed her. Her mother and father did all those evil things, Lord, and we forgive them all. And Lord, we thank you you became the curse. We thank you that this curse is broken. The curse of rebellion that passed down from her father, doing all those things to her brother. I break that curse right now, and I command you, come all the way out. Come all the way out of the brain. 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 Out of the brain. Fight him. Keep going. Come out of the brain. So what do you think you need from God? Native American stuff, bro. You're into that stuff? Well, I, I have, my family members are Native, so oh. I think it's been passed down. Oh, okay. Heavenly Father. Like biker gang stuff, too, and religious spirit. All right. Well, Lord... I know that the religious spirits always turn on a man and they tell him he's not good enough and try to block grace from him, Lord. So, Lord, we repent of believing these religious spirits. Lord, we repent of everything our family did in sweat lodges with the medicine man, with any type of peyote. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We can be broke free from that curse. Come out. Hold on. Come out. Come out of there. Fight them, streamers. You can get delivered from all of it. Come out right now. I break that Native American soul tie with the medicine man. Come out, Native American spirit man. Come out right now, sweat lodge demons, totem poles. Come out right now, Kachina dolls. We renounce the works of darkness. We renounce the occult and witchcraft in the bloodline. Come out right now. Come out, religious spirits. Come out right now. Sir, what do you think you need to be delivered from? What's still in there? What do you need to be delivered from? You're talking about the sins or where I feel Like, the what do you think, actual spirits? Yeah, what are you sensing? Um, I've got something in my core. It's been driving me crazy for as long as I can remember. Oh. The confusion, uh, tension in my head, uh, ringing in my ears. Oh, okay. You ever hate yourself? Yeah, yeah. You're willing to forgive yourself and let the spirit world know? Yes, yes. yes. All right, what's your first name? Uh, David. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for Brother David. David came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, not by his own will, but by the revelation of the Father. He revealed the Savior, Lord. Lord, we thank you for grace. Lord, we forgive ourselves, Lord. Lord, everyone was critical. And when they were critical, we had an attitude of, I'm going to show them, and I'm going to overachieve, and I'm going to show them all that I made it on my own power. He was set up for failure by a demon of rejection. We forgive ourselves, Lord. We renounce any witchcraft in the family line that allowed these monitoring spirits that are following him around and condemning him. We repent, Lord, on their behalf, and we thank you that he can go free. I bind this rejection in Jesus' name. I bind this foul devil of any autoimmune disease. I bind any alcohol spirits. I bind any food for comfort and food for pleasure spirits. I bind this devil that's messing with his mind. And I command you to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Come out, you devil in the mind, trying to hijack him, giving him mental illness. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. He's ready to go. Keep fighting him. Come out of there. Come out of there. Infirmity, sickness, and disease, self-hatred. Come out of there right now. You've been messing with his mind. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. Keep going. You got him. Go. 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 Leave this man. Leave this man. Come out of there. Come out of his head. Go. Go. I do not hate myself. Go. The blood of Jesus cleanses from unrighteousness. Go. God gives power, love, and a sound mind. Come out of there. Voices in his head. Come out of there, those mental illness voices. Come out, blocking his mind from thinking clearly. 
blocking his mind from reading the Bible. Come out. What? Blocking his mind from loving people. Come out. Fight him. Come out of my head. Stop resisting and come out. Stop resisting and come out. Come out. Everything affecting his gut biome. The devil's sticking in his gut. Come out of there. Those devils from drinking. Those devils from rock and roll. Those devils from sex. Come all the way out. Come all the way out. Go. 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 Come out. You're lying. I'm a blessed man. You try to believe me. I Tell me I wasn't. I'm a blessed man. My father is the Lord. Come out of my head. All that popping in my head, I command you to come out. All those devils moving around with negative thoughts, negative emotions, and hatred. Come out of there. Self-hatred. Come out of the brain. Self-hatred. Come out of the mind. Come all the way out in the name of Jesus. Send him power, Lord, to get these out. He's got the anointing. Thank you that he's driving him out of himself. Keep going. You got him. Keep driving him. This man needs joy. This man needs hope. This man needs health. We're calling on you, Lord. We're calling on you. <laughs> Devil, you can't hide. You can't hide. You can't hide. Any spirit that is in that knee is your left knee or right knee. I bind any spirit that came down to attack his knee. Any spirit of sickness, disease, and infirmity that was passed down from the forefathers and preceding generations that would destroy his goals and his dreams of using the platform of college athletics for God's glory. Come out of there right now. Any spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease, come out. Come out. Any fear spirit that he had as a kid, come out. Any fear spirit he had as a kid, come out. Any spirit fear that he, God won't show up when he ministers, come out. Come out right now. Fear that he can't minister effectively, come out. Fear that people won't listen to him. Fear that it's about respect, come out right now. No, it's about God's word. It's about God's love. Come out. Fear of ministering, come out. Fear of ministering, come out. Being critical towards other people, come out right now. That critical spirit that came from his, his other friends. Come out right now, being critical towards others. Come out right now. It says, speak only what is beneficial to those who listen, that it may benefit those who have a need. Come out of there right now. Come out of there, critical spirit. Come out right now. Come out feeling, oh no, I might not be blessed. Oh no, I might not be able to do something great. You're a liar. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of his endocrine system. Come out of every body, part of his body. Come out. I bind you. Come out of there. Generational curses when his dad did drugs. Come out. Generational curses when his dad did evil. I break that generational curse. I break the generational curse. Come out. I break the curses from Lehi. Land curses from Lehi. Come out right now. I break the land curses of Lehi. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. I bind the spirit of Lehi. Come out right now. I bind the spirit of Lehi. Go. Fight him. Fight him. Fight him. Get everything out. Come out of my kidneys, come out of my back, come out of my bones, come out of my muscles in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Lord, I pray a blessing on the woman of God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit covering this child and blessings that it would be a healthy child. Oh, it would be a child set apart for your glory. Thank you that she's a good mother with the anointing. She's a good helpmate. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my brother who has power. Power to evangelize, power to serve, power to prosper, power to increase and teach others to do the same for your glory. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I break the generational curse. Generational curses, I break you. Generational curses of failure. Generational curses of losing the mind. Generational curses of backsliding. Generational curses, come out. Generational curses of hopelessness. Ge generational curses of self-destructive behavior. Come out. Come out. Thank you for the anointing. The anointing to grow. The anointing to love. The anointing to teach. The anointing to go through self-deliverance. The anointing to forgive people who did terrible things. Thank you for the anointing. Send her the anointing. She can get any spirit out she wants. She has tasted rounds and rounds of deliverance. She has the anointing. I bind the blocker. I bind the blocker that says she's not ready, that she's not ready for prosperity, that she's not ready to be an ambassador for the kingdom and help somebody. I bind that fear spirit that say my husband's not ready. He don't look right and talk right. No, she's ready. She's ready. Just begin to praise him for the anointing that he's given you. I got the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I got the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
your head getting clear? It's uh, feeling not quite as tense as, oh. as it was. So here the room. Did you ever used to curse yourself? Like, I suck, I'm terrible, I'll never oh, yeah. make it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. For my failures, uh, for the sin in my life. Okay. For, for Lord, God. thank you that we're under grace. Yes. We're not under the law. Lord, thank you where sin does abound, grace does that much more abound. I thank you for the grace over my, my brother. Thank you that you love him and you're cleansing him. And Lord, thank you for the power to break these word curses he spoke over himself. I break the word curse of not good enough. I break the word curse of being a worthless or a loser or a failure or not good enough or not worthy enough. I break self-imposed word curses in Jesus' name. And I command you, come out. Word curses of destruction. Word curses of failure. Go. Word curses of failure. Go. Go. Go out. Go out. Go out. Too big. Go. Anything moving around in there? Or you feel fine or what? You ever do any drugs? What kind of drugs did you do? You were a casual tester of all drugs or were you an addict to something? I was an addict to marijuana for years. And oh. Years. And God delivered you? Yeah, I ruined my marriage. I ruined my marriage with it. Oh, okay. Spirit of addiction and uh, also Asmodeus. What's that God spirit? Lust. Oh. Ancient God of lust. Oh, wow. We don't want nothing to do with them things. All right, let's repent. Get it on out. This is just the time to get it out. Lord, we thank you. Well, thank you, Lord, that we forgive that person that messed with him sexually, that allowed that lust demon to come into his body as a young age. We pray you'd go find him before he dies so he doesn't have to go to hell for molesting a boy. Lord, thank you that this curse is broken, that he's not a pervert. Lord, thank you that he's not a drug addict, that he's not going to wreck his next marriage if that's what you call him to. Thank you for mercy that he can fulfill his call and he can preach what a wonderful, forgiving, and good God you are and how you can receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Come out, lust. Come out, molestation. Come out, molestation. Come out, weed, demon. Come out of there, pharmacia. Come out of there, all these devils talking to him. Get him out. Come all the way out. Come all the way out. You're telling me he's a failure. Come out, we all fail. Fall short of the glory of God. And God picks us back up. Sets us on solid ground. Come out. Lust demons on his genitals. Come out. Lust demons in his mouth. Come out. Lust demons in his mouth. Come out right now. Oral sex demons. Come out of there right now. Sodomy spirits. I command you to come out of there right now. Come out. All these impure thoughts. All these impure fantasies. Go. Drive him out. Go. You got him. Drive him out of your life. Just pray in your tongues now. Fill her with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Lord, fill her with the Holy Ghost. Let those tongues take off. Let her pray in tongues every single day for the rest of her life. Even if it's one minute, even if it's five minutes. De Korama, fill her, Lord, with the Holy Ghost and power. Da Koresh Kumatara Kuramas, come out. She's got the gift. You told her, I don't know if I got the gift. Oh, you lied to her. She is called. Go. She is gifted and anointed by the Father. Go. You destroy her through doubt and unbelief. Go. 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 You're trying to make her double minded with your lies. I command that liar to come out. Lies. Lies. Lies, come out. Go. Go, you liar. Witchcraft lies. Kundalini lies. Choking lies. Confusion lies. Go, you liar. Fight him till he goes all the way out. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. Come out. He's not going to lose his mind. Crack cocaine. Come out. Crack cocaine. Come out. Come out. Generational curses from his dad of fighting. Generational curses of fighting. You want him to fight himself. You want him to fight people, fight his family. You want to fight? No, he's going to fight in the spirit world, devil. You're blocking him. Come out. You're blocking him. Come out of there. You're telling him he's not articulate enough. He's not persuasive enough to be a minister. You're a liar. God is enough, and he supplies all our needs according to his glorious riches, which are in heaven. Come out of there. Feeling like he's not enough, stumping his growth. Come out right now. Come out. Come out, trying to spin him around on YouTube. Oh, come out right now. 
you're wasting his time. He needs to be in the Word of God. He needs no man to teach him. He's got the Holy Ghost. He's got the power. Come out of there right now. Fighting with his mother. Come out. Fighting with his mother. There's no one better to help each other get delivered than who you got in trouble with. Oh, they know everything about each other. You lied to him about it. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Fight him. Streamers, I'm going to pray for you. If you're still watching, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, it says 38 people are watching. I'm going to guess that 15 fell asleep. And that leaves us with 18 still watching. Lord, I bless every streamer in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift up my hands and I pray that they would be blessed. I pray for the streamers to receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit. I pray they would receive the Holy Spirit power. Lord, I thank you that you are on the mercy seat, the seat of power. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you send your, your power to these believers for deliverance, for a sound mind, for liberation from the oppression. Oppression. In Jesus' name, I bind you, Satan. I command you to let the streamers go. I bind the spirit of infirmity. I bind the spirit of insanity. I break witchcraft curses that were prayed over them in the name of Jesus. I break the self-imposed curses. I break them off them in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I command religious spirits. I command the spirit of stupor and stupid to come out in the name of Jesus. I command those devils that are blocking them, come out in the name of Jesus. Come out of the people of God. Come out of the men and women of God. Bro, are you all right with your health? Not really, man. Can you eat food? Uh, Is it hard? What do you do for work? Pest control. Oh, it's nice to be slim, but you're losing no, a little bit of your muscles. Too much, man. Okay. I just got a nutrition coach to help me out. All right. Well, Lord, I thank you, Lord. We're going to submit this to you, Lord, that his body would go back in accordance with your design, Lord. He needs his body. He's in the physical work. He's out there in this heat. It's going to be 110 degrees. Lord, I thank you that you're healing his gut biome, Lord. I break any parasitical infection in Jesus' name. I curse every spirit of sickness and disease that's messing with his ability to grow and gain muscle and work with efficiency. I bind the spirit of unhealthy relationship with food, under eating. I bind you right now. Come out of there. Come out of there trying to get him to deteriorate away. I break you right now. Spirit of infirmity trying to make him susceptible to a disease. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Did you get vaccinated? No. Oh, praise I'm God. Get, no. Okay, <laughs> good. Praise God. Come out of there. I command the spirit of infirmity. You're trying to... Come out of there. I command the spirit of lungs that came in. The spirit's in the lungs from pot. Come out of there, pot smoker. Come out. He can't eat unless he smokes pot. Come out. I know what you do to people. Pot smoker, come out. Pot smoker, come out of there right now, messing with his ability to eat food. Come out. His leg did? I don't know. Okay. Oh. Well, Lord, we know that, Lord, you give us control, Lord. You give us control over our bodies. Lord, I, we don't know what that is. I've never seen that or heard that before. But, Lord, I thank you, Lord, anything in this body or central nervous system that's trying to confuse her about deliverance, confuse her about her freedom, confuse her about her call in life and her prosperity. She prayed her brother into good health. She prayed her brother into eternal life. Her prayers are heard by God. We pray for ourselves, Lord. If there's anything in this central nervous system, anything in this brain that's making this leg move uncontrollably, we don't want nothing to do with it. I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Kundalini, I command you to come out. Kundalini, gyrating spirits, come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command anything in there, go out of the brain. Go out of the brain. Confusion about deliverance, confusion about freedom, confusion about her calling and able to help people. Any witchcraft, I bind your power. Come out of there. Take a big breath. Let it go. It'll come out. Nice, easy breath, streamers. There he goes. Get him out of there. Just take a nice, easy breath, streamer. You'll be just fine. Take a nice, easy breath. Oh, I'm not living like this. I am. 
Oh, wow. I'm not Jewish, though. Oh, no. I know. I might be a freckle. But I think that would make me a, that'd make me a, a Samaritan. Anyway, praise God. You got the anointing. Oh. That's you just, that, I think it was more to do with your heart being open when that hand happened to be on your head at that time. Whenever your heart's open to receive from God, you receive from God. Whether it's this hand, that hand, or you commanding them, you asking God, it's your faith. It's your faith. He loves you. He's always going to help you. You've been fighting a good fight. You helped your brother get off oxygen. Your brother wanted to die. You're a helper. You're doing good things. Keep going strong. Thank you. Thank you for coming. There he goes. Come out of there right now. Infirmity, come out of that man. Come out. He's not going to die. Arthritis, infirmity, come out of the lungs. 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 Thank you for the anointing, Lord. Thank you for the anointing, Lord. Lord, uh, we give up all this anger. That anger got him to win some fights. That anger got him to win some battles. But Lord, we can't have ungodly anger. It wrecks his life. It's wrecked relationships. It's wrecked jobs. Thank you, Jesus. There's a righteous anger. That's the anger he has to operate in. Come out right now. Come out. That anger and rage, I bind your power in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Anger and rage. Let this man go. Anger and rage. Fighting, saying things that he wishes he wouldn't have said. Come out of there right now. Go. Big breath, sir. Big breath. Let that stuff go. Go out. Blessings. Blessings. If you're blessed, oh, the devil can't curse you. Oh, I'll go to the back part. Dun, dun, dun. So here's your homework assignment. This will help you go to the next level. Those things won back in. They'll come out in layers. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We wrote all those scriptures down to build your faith. They start messing with you, put your hands on your head, tell him no. You know it's him now. And you're getting him out. That means you got the anointing. What he started, he's going to finish. Hey, God bless you. Appreciate it. You're from where? I'm from Gallup. Gallup? Oh, okay. Oh, that was probably Mike. He answers the email. I'm, I'm Rick. He'll be here tomorrow. You coming tomorrow? I might be. I have to go back tomorrow, but if I could get my brother to watch, stay long enough. Oh, okay. If not, keep watching online. Next time you watch online, you'll be ready when you get a chance to do that homework assignment. Okay. You'll be a little right. more faster. Okay. Um, I'll check it out. I've read through the website and uh, done as much research as I can. Hey, do you need one of these for this guy? Sure. Well, thank you. Yeah, God bless you, bro. Appreciate you. Yeah. Sir, I... My encouragement is this. You got you to gotta get up in the day and you got to speak life over yourself for at least three to five minutes the minute you get up. You got to speak life. God's for me. God's for me who can be against me. For you do not spare his own son, will he certainly not give me all things? I know he's my ever-present help in my time of need, and I'm going to call upon you, Lord, today for your help. I want my body back. I want my strength back. I want my ministry back. I want my relationship with my wife back. Lord, I know you can do it. I don't believe the report of the doctor that I'm going to get sick and die. If I was going to get sick and die, I'd have died with COVID. But you kept me through it because you love me and you got a call on my life. I thank you that I'm going to heaven by grace. My faith and trust is in Jesus and his finished work. You just begin to go over all the scriptures you know and bless yourself. That's your only problem, deliverance. I think you got it. You got the cart before the horse that you just had to get delivered and your mind would go back. No, your mind will go back when you renew it according to the word of God. It's going to start helping you. It's going to bring life into your bones. 
It's going to allow your spirit man to get strong and your flesh to get weak so that your spirit man leads your life and with what you say and what you believe and what you do. I bless him. Bless him in his quiet times. I bless him in his prayer times. I bless him, Lord, and I thank you that you're with him in Jesus' name. What are you thinking about, man? No, I was just asking for stuff right now. Oh, cool. Well, don't let me interrupt that. You're doing the best part. Keep asking. <laughs> Slim guy? Oh, wow. He's Native American, was, was molested by a... Oh, wow. So, whenever they... Was it like that? I said, were you ever bound or chained? He said, I can't remember. I said,